Is this thing on? Can you hear me now? Is everybody ready to get going? Yes, no, maybe so? Okay. How was lunch? Good. Okay. All right, real quick, how many people have already been in a class yesterday or today? No, I know, we had a class this morning. Some people are coming back for a different class. Okay, so a handful? Okay, so we're going to kind of rehash some of the things. No food or drink in here, unless it's water. Everybody good? We don't have anybody rushing out or anything? Okay. Uh, emergency exits, obviously in the rear, or this corner up the stairs, or through this back door over here. Restrooms out the door to the left. Put your cell phones on vibrate, stun, phase off, whatever you want to call it, just so it's quiet. Fingers crossed, mine don't go off after I give you that request, because sometimes that happens. Okay. Okay, what is the biggest rule we have to follow? Who can tell me? Anyone? No. Not prohibited harassment rules. What's the biggest rule in, our, in this class? What's going to make this class more successful? Participation, interaction. We're going to have a dialogue, a conversation. Okay? Can we do that? See, this is where I ask a question, you respond. Can we do that? Okay, good, because it's going to go a lot better for you if you do, okay? Doesn't matter to me, I can talk all day, right? Okay, so, why are we here? They made us come here, right? Okay, so how many people in this room are hostages? Only a handful. Everybody else, oh, they made me come, but I'll stay anyway, whatever. It's 90 minutes of my life, I'll never get back, blah, blah, right? Okay, so now we got that out of the way. As long as we have a dialogue and a conversation, it'll go by real quickly. Is everybody good with that? Okay, good. So, has anything changed in the last 20 years? Very good. Here's the downer moment of this class. How many of you remember Doug Mule? How many of you know why Doug Mule is not here today? A handful. How many of you do not? A handful. Doug Mule died September of 2013. <laughs> and if you want to pray, you can pray with him. Okay? But it's kind of a downer, right? Doug was a relatively young guy, I think, had a lot to offer, a huge heart, and he's not here anymore. Okay? And the reason I say that is because it's been over 18 months and some people still didn't know that. Okay? So, Hopefully, after two years has passed, I'm going to stop having to tell everybody that Doug had died. All right? One of the reasons I do that is I'm partway into a presentation one time, and somebody shouts out from the back, where's Doug, the training guy? So that's my downer moment. Okay? I've got to let everybody know if you hadn't already heard. So besides Doug has passed, what else has changed in the last 20 years? Didn't get much of a raise? Me neither. Okay. Technology, somebody said. What else? Perceptions of? I'm sorry? The way we view other people. Our awareness of what's appropriate and not appropriate in the workplace, has that changed? Have any laws changed? Yes. Okay. The rules have changed. The rules are probably the same. They're just maybe a little more restrictive or we're more aware, so we think. You know, people are coming down on us harder. Is that possible? Okay. So, <clears throat> why else do we have to be here? When's the last time you had this class? A year ago, two years ago, whatever it's been. Okay. Why do you have to have the class again? It's mandatory because they told me I had to go. No, it doesn't have to do something with our insurance Okay. Good. Okay. Yes, you want to train in, in lower liability. Right. Okay, so here's my information. My name is Kurt Bratz. I'm a loss control manager for the Arizona County's insurance pool. Okay, so when somebody files a claim, we manage that claim in association with Mojave County Risk Management, County Attorney's Office, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So is prohibited harassment going on in the workplace ever a good thing? No. Can it cost tons and tons of money? Yes. Does it increase turnover and do a lot of other really bad things to Mojave? Yes. Okay, so we don't want to do that, do we? No, so that's why we're here. So, any questions on this information? 
My phone number and email is there at the bottom. If you need to get in touch with me, I will get in touch with you again. It may not be the day that you try to contact me. My business card's up here. I've got a few left. If you need one, go ahead and grab that. All right, any questions so far? Okay, so let's move on. Course goals. Can we do three performance objectives instead of 15? What do you think? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. So we can identify types of harassment in the workplace, we can learn to mitigate harassment in the workplace, and we can gain respect for everyone in the workplace. Fair enough? And it's going to be so obvious at the end of class that we won't even have to rehash those. Okay? So I won't make you repeat the whole thing again. Good enough? Okay. So going back to what has changed in the last 20 years. Laws change. We're more aware. Maybe we're more sensitive, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Okay? What changed in Arizona this year? What major law? Same-sex marriage. Is everybody aware of that? Okay. Did you expect that? Would you have expected to hear that 20 years ago? No. Five years ago? No. Is anybody surprised that it's here now? Some people yes, some people no. Okay. When you're talking about protected classes, would you be surprised to know that other states protect sexual preference under their protected classes? No, but Arizona doesn't, okay? But we have same-sex marriage. Anyway, so we'll get into the weeds a little bit later, but things have changed, right? What has changed about technology? Accessibility. Accessibility. How many people have a smartphone? Can you get the internet pretty much 24 hours a day anywhere you are? If you got, not if you got T-Mobile, okay? I mean, Verizon, AT&T, I don't know, there's a lot of them, right? Okay, so 20 years ago, who had a cell phone? Nobody. Almost nobody. The boss, and it was a big one, and it was plugged into the car with a cord, right? I'm on the phone in the car, right? And now, now everybody's got them, right? Almost every kid in school probably has a smartphone now, at least junior high, high school, for sure high school. Okay, how many people do not have a smartphone? How many people do not have a cell phone? Just a couple. Okay, you're not missing out on anything, trust me. Okay, so <clears throat> what else has changed from 20 years ago to today related to technology and our ability to access that technology? Airbags. Airbags, we didn't have airbags. Okay. You go back far enough, we didn't have seat belts either, right? Okay, what else? Facebook. Facebook. Dun, dun, dun. What else is out there besides Facebook? Twitter. Twitter, keep going. YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram, Snapchat, MySpace. People are like MySpace. That was like 2007, right? Okay. So are those pretty cool things? Social media? You do a lot of cool stuff that way? You can keep in touch with people. You can email, you can access, you can find out what your family members are doing, right? Yes, no, anyone? Yes, okay, now, somebody said Snapchat. Who wants to explain to the non-users, the non-believers, what Snapchat is? She's laughing, so I know she knows how to explain it. Who wants to explain it? I was gonna say TikTok. We can stay all day if you want. Go ahead. Um, it's the idea that they can snap a pic, send it to somebody, and supposedly after two seconds, it goes away. Okay, so let me put it in, in and I'll put it in different terms. Okay, let me expand on her definition. When she says snap a pic, she means take a photograph. Okay? Okay? Because some people don't know what's a snap a pic, right? Okay? So you can take a photograph, click, Kurt's hiking the Grand Canyon, right? And I can send that to somebody, and when they get it, they hold their finger on the screen and they can look at it for eight seconds or whatever the time default is. And after that, it goes away, right? So it's maybe on somebody's network somewhere, right? Or while somebody's holding their finger on the screen, they take a screenshot, which means you capture whatever's on the screen at the time, right? And it saves it to your phone. 
Okay, so knowing what you know, do people use Snapchat and smartphones to send inappropriate messages? Knowing that it'll get deleted on the other end. Fingers crossed, right? Okay, so now that you know that not necessarily everything gets deleted, it's in some server somewhere, right? Do you think that people that are using it for inappropriate means will stop using it? Probably not. Should they? Absolutely. Okay, so can you check your Facebook on the county computer system? Come on now. Can you check your Facebook? Yes, you are capable of doing that, right? Are you supposed to be doing it? That's a separate question. Yeah, okay, so I go to my kid's school, and I get on the internet, and I'm looking something up, and oh, just look it up on Facebook. Facebook's blocked on your website. My kids tell me, well, let me show you how to get around that, Dad. <laughs> They've already figured it out. Of course, my kids are grown now, so it doesn't matter, but it's like, why is a 14-year-old girl telling me how to hack Facebook in her high school? Because she can. Yeah, you think all their friends know that? Absolutely. Okay. So things have certainly changed regarding technology, Facebook, social media, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Everybody's good so far? Can we move on? All right. Here we go. So tell me if these are appropriate behaviors or not. Repeated requests for dates. If they said yes, you're dating. Right? There's your out. But I asked her out nine times. She said yes nine times. Wow, you guys are in a relationship. But if she says no on the tenth time, what does that mean? You should probably stop asking, right? Okay. And it can go for girls asking guys, of course. Okay. Unwanted sexual propositions. Appropriate or not? Good. Gender specific comments, including sexual innuendo and dirty jokes? Not. Email, internet, social media sources. Appropriate or not at work? Depends on how you use it. Okay. Do you all have access to Mojave County email? Yes. Do you use it for work all the time? Yes. If you check your Facebook secretly by hacking the system, do you use county email to forward jokes from somewhere? You shouldn't, right? Okay. And we talked about social media. Blocking, following, stalking. Appropriate or not? Not. Suggestive gestures, movements, or sounds? Not. There's less knots that time. I was like, well, sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's not appropriate. Touching, hugging, massaging, brushing against someone? Not. See, we're even losing people now. Well, sometimes touching is cool at work. Okay. The answer to all of these is not resoundingly, okay? So now I need a volunteer. Don't all jump up at once. I only need one. You won't get hurt. You may get scarred for life, but you won't get hurt. You can't volunteer someone else. Voluntold. Voluntell your friends. Come on down. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, golf clap. Of course, it has to be somebody in the back of the room, so now we've got to wait. Like, easy on the steps. Take your time. We're not going anywhere. OK, so tell me if this is appropriate or not appropriate in the workplace. How are you today? Good. You sure? OK. When you get back from lunch later, can you meet me in the break room? I want to review the reports you turned in. Sure. What do you think? What's the difference? Hand holding. We're shaking hands. OK. What's the difference? Time? What if one of us was a woman? In the break room, not the locker room, the break room. Okay? Would it be different if the supervisor was a woman in asking that of a male employee and I held hands that long? Maybe. What if I'm the supervisor and he's a woman and I'm holding his hand? Maybe. What if it's this? Hey. <laughs> when you get back from lunch later. Can you meet me in the break room? I'd like to review the reports you turned in. I know last time I said sure. I'm not <laughs> okay, so, sure so now he's that. second guessing it. What did I do different? The way I said it. I said the exact same thing, right? Hey, give him the little eyes. Hey. 
you know? Okay, so in this interaction, whose perception matters? His. Does it matter at all what I intended? No. It only matters what he or she perceives, right? How about this? Hey, thanks for staying late tonight. Fine? How about this? Hey, I appreciate you staying late tonight. Can you stay late tomorrow night? I need you to help me to work on a project. Get a room. That's probably a little much. Okay? Appropriate or not appropriate? Depends on, so it's his perception. Now, the difference between this and this is I've closed the distance, right? Some people are close talkers. Okay? Does that make you feel uncomfortable at times? Okay? Now, what if I was massaging his shoulder while I said that? Not appropriate, right? What if all of a sudden my hand kind of floated down his back? And then, of course, I'm going to throw in the eight. You know? Okay. Appropriate, not appropriate. Not appropriate. Doesn't matter. Gender doesn't matter. His perception matters. My intent doesn't matter at all. Now, you're no good to me for this next example. What if he were pregnant? Okay? <laughs> you don't have to do that. Okay? So, thank you. Golf clap. You can go back. Okay, so think about that. Do people get pregnant? Stop. Do people come to work pregnant? I said that one time and it was like, ooh, that's not what I meant, you know it, okay? So, people get pregnant, right? And they stay in the workforce, right? Right up sometimes until I'm having the baby tomorrow, okay? Do people go hands on with people that are pregnant? Yes. Is it appropriate? It depends, right? How many times have you ever asked a question to HR and the answer is, well, it depends? It depends, right? You need to know the circumstances. Not every single case is the same all the time, right? So, you've got five women working in an office, worked together for 15 years, raised children together, kids play together, go to school together. One of them is pregnant. Would it be more acceptable under those circumstances, because they're all work sisters, that they would want to touch somebody's tummy if the baby was kicking? It would be more acceptable as long as as long as she consents, which means, shouldn't we ask? And wouldn't you always have the opportunity to say, no, thank you. Has anybody ever been pregnant accosted in a store? Oh, look, you're pregnant. And it's like, you're a complete stranger, right? OK, so that's not on the slide, but it's, I'm trying to give you a visual representation with the hands. Handshake, hand on the shoulder, talking about pregnancy. You kind of know it when you see it, right? Okay, you know at some point that the behavior starts to interfere with our work relationship, wouldn't it? Yes or no? Yes, okay. What type of harassment is this? What kind of undertone did all of those examples have? Good. It was all some form or it could be misconstrued or understood to be a sexual harassment situation. Okay. What is harassment? Can it be those four things? Yes. OK. <clears throat> In this photograph that's up here, what is going on? What do you think? They just finished his performance appraisal. Good job. <laughs> no? OK. Is this appropriate in the workplace? No. If a man put his hand on a woman like that in the workplace, how would that go? What do you think? It's totally cool? No. OK. What is he thinking? Huh? What is he thinking? All right. You know, it is about time. You know, I've been on Stairmaster. Nobody recognized this forever? OK. OK. It's not appropriate under any circumstances. What if it was a male and a male? No, female, female. What if they're on the same volleyball team? Does that happen on sporting events all the time? Yes. OK. In the workplace? No, not appropriate. OK, so let's talk about verbal. Is this verbal harassment? Not what I'm saying. What I'm putting up there. I'm not going to ask you to be that other woman. Everybody's like, ew, creep. Right? There is no other meaning to what that says than what we're all thinking, right? Okay. So, written. 
Let's say somebody writes this and said to somebody on a smartphone or whatever, I miss your tender lips, your soft legs, and your very hot body. <laughs> I delete that text in my phone all the time. It's like, OK, <laughs> got it, right? OK, no, I've never gotten that text in my life. Never will, OK? So should you be sending this via text, smartphone, instant message, email, any other way? If it's your husband. If it's your husband. Good. So, what if your husband's another county employee? Yeah. Still, your husband. Still your husband. What if it's on his county issued smartphone? Probably shouldn't do that, right? Okay, so you ready for this? On county time, county uniform, county vehicle, county equipment, county server, county issued phone, email, network, intranet, internet, blah, blah, blah. If there is any way you can associate the word county slash your employer, probably shouldn't be doing it, right? So these things should not be going on if there's any way to tie it back. You know, if we're both off, it is our lunch hour, and I go to lunch with my wife, and I kiss her, is that an issue? No. no. Okay. So, I'm sorry, what? What if you were in the lunch, you're going to make someone else uncomfortable? That's always possible. Okay. Now, if you don't know that it made somebody else uncomfortable, are you likely to repeat that behavior? Yes. Yes. Okay? And if it made me uncomfortable and I didn't tell you and you did it again, who's responsible for that? I didn't tell you, right? Go to Burger King. Okay? They've got a kissing table at Burger King. Okay? So, but, and we'll talk about that. It's your responsibility to kind of define those boundaries of what's appropriate or not appropriate or what makes you feel uncomfortable. Okay? So, visual. Would this ever be appropriate to be hanging up in the workplace? No. If you're a pole dancer, okay. Somebody says, "Yeah, if you worked at uh, what's that restaurant? Hooters." Yeah, totally. We don't work at Hooters, do we? We don't have a county maintained owned Hooters, right? <laughs> Nobody gets reassigned to Hooters, okay? Dancers dress like that, but dancers don't work in Mojave County dressed like that, as in a Mojave County employee, right? Can you imagine somebody in the appraiser's office coming to work like that? Customer service. No, probably not, right? OK, so that would never be appropriate to be hanging up in the workplace, right? What if it was a beefcake calendar, some firefighter with no shirt on? What do you think? Appropriate or not appropriate? Yeah, that'd be all right. See? There's always one. Say that again? It was a county firefighter. Still can't have pictures of him hanging up in the workplace. It could offend somebody. What if he was a sheriff deputy? Still not OK, especially the sheriff's deputies. We've got to find him in here. They're always sitting in the back. Did you ever notice that? All the cops sit in the back, right? Where are the cops? Now they won't raise their hand. OK. So, so it's never appropriate to have the girl that's scantily clad or the guy that's scantily clad hanging up in the workplace, right? What if it's on the locker door? The microphone just cut out for a second. The back of your locker door, the top of your Toolbox, wallpaper, screensaver, anything like that? Nope. nope. Never appropriate. You know why we never want the firefighter beefcake calendars hanging up? Because nobody asks us to be in that calendar. <laughs> okay? And inevitably, when I asked that, the women were like, yeah, we should totally hang those up all over the workplace. No, you should totally not. Okay? And one of the things that Arizona County's insurance pool does is we go around and do building reviews. And we might have come through one of your buildings, but if not, we will eventually. Okay? You would be shocked at some of the stuff we find hanging up in workplaces that people think is totally appropriate. And of course, news flash, if you have it hanging up and I come through, I'm going to take a photograph of it and it's going to go in our report. Hint, hint. Okay? Take it down before we get there. All right? Matco tools. You know. Super drill, chainsaw, whatever, blah, 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 and Daisy Dukes in a bikini top. That's not safe. You know you need a long sleeve shirt and work pants and, you know, eye protection. Okay? So take that stuff down. All right. So let's get past this. Physical in nature. Would this ever be appropriate in the workplace? What do you think? Retraining. What is she doing? He's, 
she's trying to revive him off the keyboard. Bam! Okay. Now again, role reversal. What if a man did that to a woman in the workplace? Yeah. Not good, right? Okay. So when we're talking about what's appropriate and not appropriate in the workplace, shaking hands, maybe a fist dap, maybe a pat on the shoulder, appropriate. I think everybody would mostly agree with that, right? If not, it's your responsibility to tell the other person it makes you uncomfortable, right? Touching like this would never be appropriate in the workplace. Yeah, then you probably both get in trouble. Okay. The, uh, the appropriate response is not to slap them. Okay. So, yeah, so if nobody ever touches you like this, there's no reason for, you know, the returning slap, right? Knock them out. Great. Dear Human Resources, I've got two positions for you to post. Right? We've got vacancy. Okay. Well, oh, that's good because we have a hiring list. He's got a black eye, so then you know who's leaving soon. Okay, the guy with the black eye in the cardboard box. Okay, so is this ever appropriate? No. Does it include social media, any of these things, visual, written? Can. Okay, we already talked about that. Sending inappropriate materials, jokes, photographs, things you think are funny. If they're on the county system, on county time, county uniform, county employment, county vehicle, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, probably should doing it, okay? So the answer to that is yes. Any questions so far? Nope, good, one person is on board. All right, terms to know, quid pro quo. What does that mean? What, speak up. That is a very expansive definition of this for that. Good, okay. So I was hoping you were gonna stop and keep like, Okay, so if you're going to do this, then I'm going to do that. No, this for that. It's an exchange, right? Okay, how about hostile work environment? Does everybody have a pretty good idea what that means? Okay, we're going to define that a lot further because everybody says, my boss yelled at me, it's a hostile work environment. Not necessarily, right? Maybe you needed yelling at. Okay, now if it's every day, that's different. Okay, so we'll define that as we go. Goes. Quid pro quo, terms to know. Here we go. Threatened with, let's say an employee is threatened with loss of his or her job. What could you be rewarded with? Maybe. Who decides who gets off probation? Supervisor? Okay, so you could be rewarded with continued employment? Maybe. How about demotion? Rewarded with promotion or not demotion. If you go out with me, you can stay at community developer two, if that's a position. Okay, but if you don't, I'm going to demote you to a one. Transfer, job training opportunities. Who gets to decide when we go to training? Supervisor? Okay. How about poor job evaluation? Can you be rewarded with something else? Such as? Good job evaluation. And to get a raise, don't you have to have a good job evaluation? Okay, so somebody says not for the county. So let's assume everybody's getting a raise July 1 and all your performance evaluations have to be turned in. If your performance evaluations are needs improvement or not contributing and you've got disciplinary action in there, will you get a raise? Probably not, okay? So all of these examples are intentionally set up to be a supervisor-subordinate relationship. Does it have to be a supervisor-subordinate for it to be quid pro quo? No, absolutely not. It can be peer-to-peer. -peer. Okay, manager over grant funds or something at the county, manager over property acquisition. Can there be a quid pro quo arrangement between those two managers where one is asking for some inappropriate favors in the workplace and in turn, if you do that, then I will support your funding request in front of the Board of Supervisors. Okay? So yes, can those things happen? Absolutely. It does not have to be a supervisor. Okay? Oh, sorry, I forgot to click that. Raise. Okay, reasonable person standard. Would a reasonable person consider behavior out of bounds? If we reenacted that again, what was your first name? Adam. Adam. 
Adam, we're down here. And we went through that again. At some point, everybody would, for the most part, agree somehow my behavior started to cross a line, right? OK. Let's say, jury of your peers, if you're all on a jury and we demonstrated this, you would say, ah, not good, right? OK, especially if my hand was massaging or floating down his back and I had all the voice inflection in the eyes and all that, right? OK, would you also agree that that interaction is going to interfere with my work relationship with Adam moving forward into the future? Yes, OK, especially if it's happened more than once. Okay. I'm sorry, somebody had some. When he avoids me, that's right. Hey, Adam, can I talk to you? Hey, where are you going? Pew, out of the break room. Adam is gone, right? So, tell me how this is going. What do you think? Why is it not good? Hostage, come on. Why is that not good? Say what? Threatening and intimidating? OK. Personal space? Does it look like she's free to leave? OK, he's kind of got her blocked there, right? OK. I have trouble getting past his hair, <laughs> right? And I'm like, if I had that head of hair, I'd just sit at my desk all day and brush it. I don't have time to go talk to anybody in the file room, right? OK, now aside from his beautiful hair, she does not look like she's welcoming this response, right? OK. What if she drops the files and starts kissing him? What do you think? OK. OK, it's welcome at that point, right? OK. But are they still in the workplace? Yes. OK. The file room will come back to haunt us. I promise. OK. So first step. Here we go in the definition. Must be unwelcome. Clearly, this looks unwelcome, right? OK. Next step, persistent or widespread? The legal definition is severe or pervasive. But persistent and widespread is a little easier to grasp, OK? So let's say he does that to her every couple days for weeks. Is that a problem? Oh, yes. OK. What if he does it to her once, hostile work environment? No. Okay, and I will tweak that a little bit and we'll get a yes answer for sure on that. Okay? So what if he does it to her once, she says no, then he does it to you once, does it to you once, does it to you, does it to you, does it to you, does it to you, and you. All right. Okay? Is that widespread? Yes. Okay? So now, can a county employee do one thing one time so egregious to get terminated? Yes. So let's say this behavior in the file room is unwelcome, and let's say he takes it way down a path of inappropriate touching, tries to disrobe her, etc., etc., etc. But it only happened once. Would that be enough to probably let that employee go? Probably. Okay. So when I say he blocks her one time and asks her out on a date one time, probably not hostile work environment. If it gets really egregious after that, probably going to get terminated anyway, right? OK, so see the difference between persistent and widespread. Make sense? OK. Come on. There it is. Or severe enough to interfere with job performance. If he takes it down that path and starts doing completely inappropriate behaviors, well beyond what we see in this photograph, is that enough to be a hostile work environment? Yes. OK. And then the last thing, based on victim's protected status. What is a protected class in this scenario? She's a female, gender, sex, right? OK. OK, so when we're talking about protected classes, and we've defined hostile work environment, what are some other protected classes? Just shout them out. Age, good. Race, good. Keep going. Not sexual orientation. Religion, national origin, those are all good. What? Disability? OK. So is that everything? No. 
There's always somebody from HR shouting out that final answer, aren't they? Is that your final answer? Okay. What do we usually get here when I say there's one missing? What do you think it is? HR cannot answer this question. Okay. Somebody said it earlier and I said no. Sexual orientation. Okay. It's not a protected class under the Department of Labor. Okay. Would it surprise you if it was next week? No. Okay. Was age always a protected class? Was disability always a protected class? And there's a bunch of others, uh, compensation, veteran status, there's a lot. Okay? But there are eight standard ones on the Department of Labor website. And then an arguing, argument could be made for many others. Sexual orientation, sexual preference, whatever you want to call it, is not one of them. So what are we missing? Go ahead, HR. Gina, who's Gina? Okay. Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. Say what? Exactly. Okay, so does everybody know what that is now? So we can move on. You sure? Man, okay. Okay, information about an individual's genetic test, genetic test of a family member, information about manifestation of a disease dis disorder in a family member, increased risk of getting disease disorder, et cetera, et cetera. Clear as mud now, right? Now can we move on? No, okay, you know what we do? Let's read a couple examples and then it'll be really crystal clear for everybody. One individual was screened and learned he was a carrier of a single mutation for a disease. His carrier status indicates that he might pass this to his children, but not that he would develop the disease himself. Who cares, right? Does anybody care? No, it's not gonna affect his job performance. Okay. He revealed this information when applying for a job and was denied the job because of his genetic mutation, even though it had no bearing on his present or future ability to perform the job. Is that a problem? Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. Makes sense now, right? Okay, here's another one. 53-year-old man in a job interview with an insurance company revealed he had a genetic disorder but wasn't having symptoms. Again, who cares? During the second interview, he was told that the company was interested in hiring him but would not be able to offer him health insurance because of his condition. He agreed to this arrangement. Would you agree to that? No. What is one of the reasons you come to work for the government? Health insurance, right? Okay, during his third interview, the company representative told him they would like to hire him, but now were unable to do so because of his condition. Is that a problem? Huge problem, okay? Last one, it's a long one. An employee's parent developed Huntington's disease, indicating the employee had a 50% chance of inheriting the, whoa, got too close to the speaker, inheriting the mutated gene that would cause her to develop the disease. She decided to be tested. A genetic counselor advised her to secure life and health insurance before testing because a positive test result would not only mean she would get the disease, but would probably prevent her from obtaining insurance as well. Does that make sense? Can you go out and get supplemental life insurance in addition to the counties? Yes. Can they deny you benefits based on pre-existing conditions? Yes. Okay. So good advice by the genetic counselor, right? You better go get life and health insurance before we do this. A coworker who overheard her making arrangements to be tested reported the employee's conversations to their boss. Kurt's opinion, not cool. Don't do it. Initially, the boss seemed empathetic and offered help. When the employee eventually shared the news that her test results indicated she did carry the mutated gene, she was fired from her job. In the eight month period prior to her termination, she had received three promotions and outstanding performance reviews. Is there an issue? Whoops. Whoops. Okay. Yeah. Cha-ching somebody's probably going to file a claim, okay? That is not good, all right? So this one continues. She has three siblings who all now choose not to get tested. Why? They don't want to get fired. They don't want their employer to find out. So they all live with the mystery if the 50-50 goes for or against them the rest of their lives while they're employed there, okay? So now is everybody clear on Gina? Yes, no? Yes. Makes a lot more sense now? Good. What are the effects of harassment on employees? If there's harassment going on in your squad, cruise, shift, team, whatever, and you know about it and it's not being dealt with, how does it make you feel? Okay? Your productivity is going to go down. 
Sorry? Poor performance. Poor performance. OK, what else? Tension. Constantly dealing with it. Okay? If a supervisor has never done anything about it for five years and something new crops up, do you feel real confident they're going to take care of that issue? No. If they haven't done it for five years? No. Okay, so let's throw a few of these up here. Distrust, pain, agitation, isolation, negativity. What do you think? Why aren't they complaining when it's happening? OK, the question is, why can't? OK, we'll talk about that. Right, you can still, you can still, yes. No, that's not true. OK, and we'll cover it, I promise. OK? Did everybody hear her question? Why can't employees complain about that when it's happening, even if it's not happening to you? You can complain, OK? Now, keep in mind, Human resources is not the complaint, com part, or complaint department. Get my tongue tied now. Okay. So, who can you go to? Supervisor. Supervisor. Okay. And we'll talk about that. I promise. Trust me. Do you trust me? I believe you. Okay. I don't want distrust. I can't point there. I don't want distrust to come in in between our relationship. Okay. Okay. Fear. Are you afraid to go to work sometimes? Even if it's not a hostile work environment, if it's not sexual harassment, do you, are you just afraid to go to work sometimes? You just don't want to put up with it anymore. Only on Monday. Only on Monday. Okay. Look at his uh, timesheets. <laughs> He's calling in sick on Monday a lot. Okay. Sarcasm, dark humor, does that occur in the workplace? Yes. Okay. You know who's an expert at it? Yeah. Who? Oh, you're not supposed to volunteer yourself. I'm trying to point fingers at somebody else. You know who's really good at that stuff? Well, I won't say. Cops. <clears throat> Cops have a really wicked, dark sense of humor, OK? They see some really horrible things, and our coping mechanisms aren't fine-tuned, OK? So how about lower job satisfaction? I think somebody said that one of the first things, OK? Do all of these things kind of build on each other, OK? Can negativity lead to stress? Can stress lead to increased use of sick time? Not just on Mondays, right? OK. Are there other effects? Yes. OK. Can we get them all on this slide? No. OK. Video. All the Gen Xers got really excited just now. Video, so cool. Hello there. Stan, hey, thanks for coming by. Sure. Uh, can I get you a coffee or anything? No, thanks, I'm fine. Oh, okay, hey, um, have a seat, thanks. please. I really appreciate this. And I could have come to your branch instead if. No, no, this worked out fine. I had a meeting in the area. So, how's the family, Ralph? Oh, great. Uh, Sally just started first grade. Is that right? Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. My youngest just graduated from college oh, last goodness. year, so that's, it goes by fast. Oh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. So, what can I do for you? Well, I didn't want to get into it over the phone, but I've had some personnel issues, and I wanted to talk to you because you're always so helpful to me. What's the problem? Well, a few weeks ago, one of our sales assistants filed sexual harassment charges against one of our FCs. It's been a real headache. What happened? Well, it's kind of complicated. It all began a few months ago with one of his clients. Mr. Sprouse, Tom will be right out. Can I get you anything? That's OK. I'll just wait here and admire the scenery. Bert, thanks for coming down. How you been? Can't complain, Tom. I see you finally got yourself a new girl. That's right. Wendy came aboard last month. Well, she's in the right business, because she certainly has some fine assets. Excuse me, Tom, do you have a moment? Yeah? I wanted to talk to you about Mr. Sprouse. I mean, the way he talked about me. <laughs> oh, well, don't worry about Bert. He's harmless. Hello? Hey, Phil. Can you hold on just one sec? Wendy, I gotta take this call. 
Tom, what he said really insulted me. Look, Wendy, he's got a $2 million account with us, so just ignore him, okay? Hey, Phil. Yeah, I got the order. I think Wendy would have let this incident pass if there hadn't been other problems between her and Tom. This is the last one. Yep, that's it. Nice. All right, excellent work. Thanks. No problem. You uh, feel like getting something to eat? No, thanks. I gotta get back home. Oh, come on. After all this hard work, the least you can do is let me buy you some dinner. Really, I have to get back. Maybe some other time. Sure, sure. You know, Wendy, uh, you've really been doing a great job. Thanks, Tom. It's funny, since you've been here, I, I feel better about myself. I have not had a lot to feel good about since my divorce. I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm sorry about your divorce. Well, you sure I can't interest you in some dinner? Yeah, really, I have to get back. My boyfriend is, is expecting me. Oh, I understand. Sure. Well, good night. Uh-huh. A few days after that, Tom blew up at her. Wendy. Yes, what's the matter? Did you open the Greenberg account? No, I had to... What have you been doing? It's been three hours. I thought I could... No, do me a favor, okay? Don't think. If there's something you don't understand, you come to me, you ask me. You got it? Yes, but no, I've no, only no been buts. trying... No, 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 Just do what I tell you to do, all right? Tom, I want to talk to you about what happened earlier. Don't worry, I straightened it out with the client. That's not what I meant. I'm very upset about the way you spoke to me. It was very embarrassing. Wendy, you took all morning to open the account. There were two other accounts to open, and all the computers were down. Why didn't you tell me? You didn't give me a chance. OK, maybe I overreacted a little, and I'm sorry. But you know, Wendy, I think a lot of the problem here has to do with your attitude. My attitude? Yeah. yeah. I think you could be a little more positive about your job. I think I've been very positive about my job. It's just hard to stay positive when you scream at me in front of everyone. Wendy, do you want the job to work out or don't you? I've been trying to make the job work out. I just don't know what you want from me. All I'm saying is you could try to be a little friendlier. This is a people business. I think that I've been very polite and I've tried to be professional. You've got to learn to relax. Look, maybe you and I, we got off on the wrong foot. Why don't we discuss it tonight over drinks? You want to have drinks? Yeah, we can talk about your future here. What? So did you have drinks with him? Of course not. Well, maybe he was just trying to bury the hatchet. Ralph, he was touching me and telling me that, that my future here depended on my being friendlier. Isn't that obvious enough? All right. Let me talk to Tom. I want to hear his version. His version? I just want to make sure that you didn't misunderstand his intentions. Wendy, don't worry. I'm sure that we can straighten this out. She said that? Mm-hmm. Tom, these are serious allegations. She's lying. That's not what this is about. Well, what is this about? She couldn't handle the pressure. She knew that I wanted to let her go, so she cooked up this harassment charge. Whoa, you wanted me to fire her? Well, why am I only hearing about this now? Hey, I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt. But after this, I want her gone. Now, I mean today. So what happened? Well, right after that, Wendy filed a complaint with our human resources department. And they came into the branch and conducted an investigation. She now works for someone else in the branch, and Tom got a written warning. What, you think I should have handled it differently? I'm not sure. What would you do differently if you had to do it again? All right, so what was the first creep factor moment of that video? What was it? The client, Bert Sprouse. What did Bert do? People are going, uh, 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 right? He was admiring her assets. What else? I'm going to enjoy the scenery, right? Inappropriate comments. Okay. And what happens when Tom, her supervisor, 
walks up. Okay. I see you got yourself a new girl. Do we say that anymore? No. What if it was Wendy was a guy? So, Tom, I see you got yourself a new boy. Wouldn't that be kind of dumb? Right? Okay, so now, not an excuse for Bert Sprouse, but he's a generation or two older than Wendy, right? What happened in the workplace 40 years prior was probably different than what's happening in the workplace now, okay? So it's not excusing it, but what he thinks is appropriate is probably clearly different than her, right? How many of you watch Mad Men? Like three of us, great, okay. Mad Men, it's on Netflix like five or six seasons, seven seasons now or something, okay? It's a uh, early 1960s New York advertising agency. Executive staff is almost predominantly male. The secretarial staff is exclusively female. What do they refer to him as? Girl. Have your girl get in touch with my girl. Where's your new girl? I see you got yourself a new girl, right? Okay, so was that appropriate then? Well, it was maybe not appropriate, but everybody did it. It was acceptable. They also smoked and drank all day in their office. Well, we don't do that anymore, do we? We don't, right? <laughs> okay. That's why your windows don't open, because somebody would be in there puffing and blowing it out the window, right? Okay. So, what was your next problem with the video? What happened? Okay, so she goes to talk to Tom. Uh, I didn't appreciate the way Mr. Sprouse spoke to me. What's Tom say? Don't worry about it. He's harmless and got a $2 million account. Okay? So then what happens? He did what? He attached her looks to the client's money. It's like, well, just go along with it because you're cute and you need to stay here because he's got a $2 million account. So just deal with it, right? Okay? So then what happens? She talks to him. Tom doesn't do anything about it. Do you think he's going to? No. So then what happens next? The file room. See? Okay. Kurt's rule, one person at a time in the file room. Never a problem, right? Oh, you're already in the file room? I'll wait until you come out. Okay. All the bad stuff's happening in the file room. I'm telling you. Okay. That's not true, but, you know, it's a funny anecdote. Okay. So what does he do in the file room? Hits on her. Okay. Wow, this is really excellent. You've been doing a good job. Can I get you something to eat? Would you like to have dinner? Whatever he says. No, no, I really get going. You know, I felt a lot better about myself, you know, since my divorce. Hand. Did you see it? Okay. No, no, it's all right. I really need to get going. Are you sure? It's the least I can do since you've been doing that. What does she finally say? Boyfriend. Got to go. Oh, I understand. Do you think Tom understands? No. And how do we know this? A few days later in the office. Don't think. You know, just do what you're told. Okay, so she comes to talk to Tom again and says what? Right, it was embarrassing the way you yelled at me essentially in the office, right? What does he say? Don't worry about it, I, just, I smoothed it over with the client. And she says, that's not what I'm talking about, right? Because the computers were down three hours, didn't get the account open. Okay, what else? You're not friendly enough. Maybe you should be friendlier. Good. This is the people business. Right? Do you want this job to work out or not? Quid pro quo? You should be friendlier and go out with me. Do you want this job to work out or not? Wasn't that what he was saying? I think I've been very professional, she says. Right? Not friendly. And he says, look, maybe we got off on the wrong foot. Maybe tonight we can discuss it over drinks. Puts his hand on her hand, right? And he says, we can discuss your future. Quid pro quo again, isn't it? That's twice in the same conversation. And she says, what? You want to have drinks? Shoots out of the chair. I think that's a no. Okay? <laughs> Guys, if you've never been rejected, that's what it looks like. Okay? So chalk that up. All right? A little visual. Okay. Anything else with that video? There was more, right? What does she do? 
She goes to HR and files a complaint. Well, she goes to, I'm going to mess his name up. I want to say it's Stan, but it's not Stan. The other guy. He comes and talks to Tom, and what does Tom say? Tom says, what? She made that up, right? Very good, very good. And as a supervisor, how many supervisors do we have in here? A few? Okay. Have you ever said anything and you just can't get it back? And Wendy's sitting across the desk from him and he says, I want to get Tom's version of the story. What does she think right then? You don't believe me. What could he have said? Let me look into it. I will get back to you. I want to go talk to Tom. She doesn't know if, she, if he's going to get Tom's side of the story or if he's going to go tell Tom to pack sand, right? Okay, so that was a good observation. So, goes to Tom. Tom, these are serious allegations. Tom says, she made it up. She trumped up these charges. She knows she's not cutting it. She knows I want her gone, and I want her gone today, right? And what does Tom's boss say? You want me to fire her, right? Based on what? Is there anything in her performance management, in her file, that says she's not doing a good job? What is the only thing she has not done there? Gone out with the boss, right? Everything else is probably stellar, okay? So at the very end, Tom's supervisor and that guy's peer, I think his name is Stan and I'm getting messed up, but anyway, they're sitting down and he says, HR came in and did an investigation. Where did Wendy go? Another department, what happened to Tom? Written warning. So the question asked at the very end is, if you had to do this again, what would you do differently? If you were Tom's boss, how would you have handled that differently? What do you think? Put him on probation for what? You have to be able to articulate it, right? You can't just say, well, you, you know, Tom's a jerk and he got a little handsy and so we're going to put him on probation. Okay? Does it violate some Mojave County policy? Yes? No? Yes. Okay? And you need to articulate that. So, how many think a written warning is sufficient? How many think it should be more severe than that? Okay? Do we know about any documentation in the past on Tom? No. Can we suspect that maybe he's done this in the past? Can we also assume if he's got a written warning now, will he probably repeat this behavior in the future? Sure, we, we can say that because we don't like Tom, right? We don't work with him, so we can say anything we want. He's not here to defend himself. Okay? Tom may not pick up on those social cues, including the disciplinary action. Okay? Why do we do disciplinary action? Documentation. Documentation. What's the purpose? To keep him down? No, change, change behavior, right? And if they can't change their behavior and come in line with the department function, county policy, move them out of the organization, right? Is that a true statement? Okay. So, let's talk about the effects of harassment on the employer now. What might those be? Lose good employees. Lose good employees. Okay. What else? Lawsuits. What else? Bad image. What else? One more thing to deal with. Anything else? Oh, wow, you guys are good. Ready? Bam! 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 Those are pretty bad, right? Productivity goals have to be met. We've got to get the job done. Okay? It's much harder to do when morale is low. True story? And it's much harder to do if we're constantly training and replacing employees, right? And if you're working in a resort organization where sexual harassment is occurring all the time, do you want to stay there? No. Okay. And in turn, what might be worse than all three of those put together? Lawsuits. What do lawsuits do? Hit you in your pocketbook, right? Does Mojave County have five-gallon buckets of cash sitting in HR or risk management so when somebody files a claim, they just go, here's your bucket of cash. No? Okay. So how does that hurt you? Besides paying out a claim, let's say that has to happen. 
Insurance premiums could go up, right? Okay, go ahead. Good. It impacts the budget. Okay. How about credibility? Somebody said image, right? Okay, so productivity is important. Morale is important. Turnover is important. All of those hurt us when they're bad, right? How hard it is, how hard is it to get your credibility back in the community once you've lost it? It's very difficult, right? And how long will it take? 20 years, 30 years, a generation. Don't know, right? Okay, so can you, as an employer, or an employee of this employer, can you allow this stuff to go on? Is that going to help or hurt Mojave County? Hurt. Okay, so the last thing there is harassment is about deciding to treat people respectfully or not. Are we all capable of treating others in the workplace respectfully? Yes. And when we don't do that, what happens? All those things. Maybe not all of them. Any part of any of those is not good for us, right? Okay, good. Supervisor errors. Do supervisors ever make mistakes? There aren't any up there. Press your button. Oh! There's always somebody to keep me on track, okay? Poor documentation training, disciplinary or complimentary. Can supervisors do a better job with this? Yes. Are supervisors also responsible for training? Only the supervisors train. No. no. Peers train, right? On the job training. The person who's been there longer trains. Come here. I'm going to show you everything you need to know. How long have you been here? Four weeks. Awesome. <laughs> okay. I feel a lot better now. Okay. So can we improve training documentation? Yes. The supervisor can. So can the person that's responsible for training. Can we improve disciplinary documentation? Yes. Can we improve complementary documentation? Does anybody know what that is? People write to your boss and say nice things about you, right? Who was in the performance management class? I was to say, hopefully a couple people, all right? And we talked about that, right? How long does it take to write a note or send an email saying somebody did a great job? A couple minutes. What is the result when that person and that person's boss gets that? It's good, right? Makes you feel good? Okay. If you get a star, do you take it home and put it on the fridge? No, it's a star board. Oh, you're saying, you're, you're honest, you're saying, where do you get stars? Oh, I thought she was messing with me. Oh, yeah, we're shining stars. We have a whole board. Cool. All right, so supervisor errors. Can a supervisor allow a sexualized workplace or culture to exist? Do they? Should they? No. Is it possible that due to frequency of interaction or you have substations that are out not in the Kingman area where maybe the supervisor is, could this be going on and the supervisor is not aware of it? Yes. Okay. Is it only the supervisor, supervisor's responsibility to report these things? No. Okay. Policy and procedures, differential or non-enforcement of policy. Can this happen? There may be a very legitimate reason that a supervisor gets with HR or whoever and we have to adapt county policy to be one thing for one employee and one thing for another, right? Sometimes that happens. We make accommodations based on our ability to do that and we don't always get to know why and that's okay. Okay, inappropriate relationship, supervisor subordinate. Is this ever a good thing? No. no. Okay. Let's say that a female supervisor is dating a male subordinate for a couple years in the workplace. And then they break up. Right? Because workplace romances always work out, right? They always end in marriage. No? Okay, so what does his evaluation look like after the breakup? What do you think? They broke up. We broke up. Zero, 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 zero. Okay. Okay, maybe they broke up because he's a really lame employee. 
uh, I'm going to give them a horrible evaluation anyway, and we might as well break up. Okay. What can we do to avoid this problem in the future? That's right. Mojave County's new policy, I will sign it, it says no one falls in love. <laughs> That's right. No dating, no love, no lust, none of it. Canceled. Forbidden. That's not going to happen, right? So can we move one or the other employee somewhere else? Usually, right? Not always, but we can get creative and try and make sure that a supervisor and subordinate are not in a dating relationship or married, right? Right, okay, good. How about unemployee related issues? Customers, victim, witnesses, vendors, other agencies. Do we have a responsibility as employees or supervisors to make sure that our employees are not getting harassed by an outside entity? Bert Sprouse. What do you think? Yes. We had an employee that was getting harassed by somebody who came in our facility uh, once a week, twice a week, for weeks and weeks and weeks. Asked her out, asked her out, asked her out. Okay, so we have little body cameras. Everybody knows what a body camera is now, right? So clipped it on the shoulder of her uniform shirt, knowing this guy's showing up. When he gets there, she turns the thing on. We have awesome video of the ceiling. But we have awesome audio of their conversation. Okay? And he is totally inappropriate and repetitively asking her. She's telling him no, no, no. So we shuttle him out of there. He leaves. We pick up the phone. We call his boss. His boss drives to Flagstaff. We play the audio for him. We never see the guy again. I don't care what happened to him. Just stop coming to our building and harassing our employee. Fair enough? Okay, and if we knew about this and we, didn't, and we just told her, suck it up, would she potentially have a claim against us for not protecting her? Yes, potentially. Okay, good. Part two. I tell you, this job is giving me headaches. Harassment issues can be a very difficult thing to deal with. Why should I have to deal with it? People should know how to behave. Ralph, people don't always know. Uh oh. Look, your job is to make sure your employees are comfortable and productive. You need to deal with it. But I didn't sign up for this. I hate this stuff. And to tell you the truth, I'm thinking about going back to being an FC. Oh, Ralph, I always thought that you would make a great branch manager. And from what I've heard about you, I've been right. Oh, come on, really? Yes. Well, I don't think anybody is happy with me here. Being a branch manager is not a popularity contest. I've had many personnel problems myself, believe me. <laughs> not like this you didn't. As a matter of fact, I did. Really? What happened? Well, it started with a complaint from an FCA. Hey, Paul, get this. Yeah. What's the difference between a woman and a beer? I don't know. A beer doesn't drive you to drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can have more than one beer in a night and not feel guilty. <laughs> That's great. You don't need a license to live with a beer. Guys. Oh, this is, you don't have to say respect beer in the morning. Hey, guys. <laughs> do you mind? I'm trying to get some work done here. Lighten up, Jane. I mean, these are funny. <laughs> no, it's not funny. It's insulting. Oh, oh sensitive. <laughs> this, these are great, this guy. Shortly afterwards, I monitored some of Ed's emails. Awesome. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. What's up, Stan? Ed, Paul, uh, I called you in because I want to make sure you understand our email policies. Sure, go ahead. First of all, you should not be exchanging anything with clients or coworkers that is potentially offensive. And that goes for web links, jokes, and photos. Well, why are you telling us this? Did somebody say something or? No, no. I've been reviewing your email. <laughs> what? You, you've been reading my email? That's my job, Ed. I'm supposed to monitor correspondence, and that includes email. But that's private stuff. Not at work. Look, I sent out three memos about this already. I didn't get any memos. Paul, do you remember getting a memo? Or... Yeah, actually, I do. Email can be copied and distributed, and that's a concern, especially if it's offensive to someone. Yeah, but my clients like jokes, okay? I can't keep them from sending me things. Actually, Ed, you can. Just tell them that your branch manager reads your email and won't tolerate any non-business correspondence on company equipment. Is that clear? 
Absolutely. Sure. Good. So did they listen to you? Yes and no. I think Paul was glad that I set down the ground rules. Unfortunately, Ed thought he could get around the ground rules by using his laptop at work. One day, someone sent him an email with a web link to a porn site. Oh, Paul. Paul, check this out. Take a look at that. Whoa, Ed, I don't think that's okay. Whoa. Hey, guys. Can you review these? Hey, Jane. Hmm. Take a look at this. Mud wrestling. <laughs> Excuse me. That's inappropriate. What's her problem? Whoa. Check out that one. Ed, I think you better turn this off. You remember what Stan said. No, no, relax, relax. This is my computer. Look at this. That's when Jane came to see me. I had another conversation with Ed and Paul. Perhaps I didn't make myself clear the last time. I was using my laptop. It doesn't matter. You're at work. Jane wanted to file a sexual harassment complaint with HR. Apparently, this hasn't been the first time she's felt offended by you two. I didn't even know it was a porn site until I opened it up. Well, then don't open up any unknown web links. This is serious, Ed. You and Paul could get fined or, or terminated for something like this, especially if you've had a prior warning. I'm going to say this one more time. No more inappropriate materials in the office. Is that clear? Absolutely. It's fine. All right, now hold on a minute. I'm going to ask Jane to come in here so that you can apologize to her. Don't you think that's a good idea? Yes, I do. Yeah, I guess. Not really. Okay, so what was the first issue with the video? Jokes. They're not even good jokes, right? <clears throat> so Ed and Paul are telling jokes, and who overhears them? Jane. What does Jane say? Not appropriate. I'm trying to get some work done here. Come on, Jane, lighten up. You're funny. No, they're not. Okay, so then what happens? Anyone? Okay, the boss calls him into the office and tells him what? Knock what off? He's monitoring their correspondence. Jane hasn't said a word, right? Okay, so now they're in the boss's office and he's telling them, that's my job, monitor your correspondence. What? That's private stuff. Not at work. Didn't I already talk about that? Internet, email, Wi-Fi, plugged into the network, whatever, doesn't matter. Can Mojave County monitor your access? Yes. Okay. This guy's monitoring correspondence for his sales team or whatever these people do, right? Okay. So what does he tell them? Knock it off. I've already sent out how many memos? Three. I don't remember getting any memos. Paul, do you remember getting any memos? Paul says, yeah, actually I do. Okay, so now how many times have they been warned? Three memos plus verbally now, right? I really mean it this time. Right? Okay, so what's the last thing he says before they leave the office? No more inappropriate materials on company equipment. I'll bring in my personal laptop, right? So Ed brings in his laptop, right? Whose email is he using? Probably works. Whose Wi-Fi is he using? Probably works, or he's plugged straight into the network. Is he sitting at a work desk? Is he in the middle of the work workspace? Is he on work time? Yes, and what does he do? He's not working. Right, unless he's a forensic specialist and he's doing some sex crimes thing for the sheriff's office, right? Okay, that's probably not his job, I'm going to say. Okay, so what does he do? Hey, Paul, check it out. Dumb. Okay, and then what does Paul say? Ed, you shouldn't do that. You remember what the boss said, right? Okay, then what does he do? my laptop and Jane check it out mud wrestling right yeah what did he think yeah yeah Jane Jane and Ed are not BFFs huh. right okay best friends forever if you don't know that one
Okay? And uh, she didn't like the beer jokes. What makes you think she's going to like porn laptop? Okay? Probably 0% chance, right? Okay. So now, Paul, the innocent bystander, could have done what when he was telling him? Walked away. Walked away. Could have done what when he showed him the laptop with the porn on it? Walked away. He could have even shut the laptop and walked away, right? Could we have prevented the exposure to Jane in that second, inc second incidence? Yes. yes. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, whoa. Stop. Don't look. Clunk. Right? Okay. So, Ed. Anyway, so, they get called back into the boss's office. What does the boss tell them? Okay. You could get fired for this. You could be fined for this. And Paul's standing there like, what am I going to do with Ed, right? I told him it wasn't appropriate, but he kept doing it. Okay. So is Ed or is Paul partially responsible? Yes. Is Ed responsible? Yes. Okay. And then he says, Jane wants to file a complaint with human resources. And this isn't the first time she's been offended by you. She didn't report the beer jokes until after the porn laptop because the boss had already caught it in the monitoring your correspondence and told them to knock it off. And he'd sent out three memos before that. How many warnings do you get? Is any of that documented other than a memo just went out to everyone? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Did Ed actually read it? Who knows? Delete, delete, delete. Right? So then the very last thing the boss tells the guys is what? Now you hang on a second. I'm going to call Jane. Have her come in here and you're going to apologize. Would you do that? No. Okay. Most people say no. Now, I won't tell you you can't do that, but you better really, really know your work group before you make that decision. And even if you decide that that's what you're going to do, wouldn't it be better to ask Jane first before you put her on the hot seat in front of these two guys? Yeah. Jane, I'd like them to apologize. Jane, pow! You know? <laughs> Okay. Couldn't that go completely south on you? And that clearly, that's the one part is not going to be here. True. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jane. <laughs> Lighten up, right? Okay. Ed, <laughs> www.anything.porn.com. Don't open it at work. Right? Pretty straightforward? Okay. Any questions on that video? All right. Here we go. Supervisory responsibility. In this case, did they immediately take action? He was monitoring correspondence and he called him in and told him to stop, right? Okay. Can we all clean up our employee language? Can we all elevate our performance and conduct? Yes. Can we pay attention to inappropriate behavior like beer jokes? Can we have stopped, can we have prevented further offensive material if we had taken more aggressive action earlier on? Three memos go out. You catch Ed sending emails about beer jokes and who knows what to his clients. What would you have done differently? Write up. Write up. Written reprimand. Okay. Maybe a day off without pay to really get his attention. You've got three warnings. Okay. Can we follow and apply county policy? Yes. yes. Now, let's say you decide you're going to write Ed up. Can you pick up the phone and call HR and get a little bit of guidance on that? Hey, this is the situation. I sent out three memos. He's putting out emails, doing all this uh, crazy stuff. Has this happened anywhere else in the county? What is your recommendation? Yeah, actually, it happened two months ago in XYZ office. Okay? And that guy was the same scenario, very similar circumstances, and he got a written reprimand. OK, thanks. Can you help me? I'll send you a draft, and we'll get through it. Yes, absolutely no problem. Can HR do that? Yes. OK, constructive discharge occurs when an employee resigns because the employer's behavior has become so intolerable or heinous or made life so difficult that the employee has no choice but to resign. When we talk about performance, morale, turnover, and credibility in the community, is constructive discharge a good thing for Mojave County? No. Why? Is that person speaking highly of Mojave County? No. What do you think they're saying? 
That place is horrible. You don't want to work there. Okay. Retaliatory discharge is a result of an employer punishing an employee for engaging in activities protected by law. Employees must prove that they were engaged in a protected activity or subsequently discharged and a connection exists between their activity and the discharge, such as filing an EEOC claim. Could that happen? Somebody get fired after filing a claim? Okay. You say no. Could it? Could. Do you have a policy that, pro that uh, prohibits retaliation? Yes. Okay. Again, who do you call if you have a question? Contact HR and ask them, hey, this is what we think is going on. What do you think? Okay. On rare occasion, somebody who's got performance issues and is being held accountable and written up and going through the progressive discipline policy will file a claim with HR alleging all these other things to try and take the heat off the fact that they are a really low performer. Okay? But it doesn't mean we stop holding them accountable for whatever they're doing wrong, right? Okay. Handling harassment. Coming back to the big finale for your question. You ready for this? What to do if you've been harassed, witnessed harassment, or harassed someone yourself? Okay? Is that going to cover it? Trust me. Okay. If you've experienced harassment, if you are comfortable, take action and inform the offender. Why does it say if comfortable? Okay. Very good. Okay, so her example is, what about the position you're in? If it's the supervisor that's doing the harassing, you're not comfortable reporting it to them because they're your boss. Do you have an alternative? Yes, another supervisor or HR. 20 years ago, what would have happened? You would have not said anything, right? And maybe some people would have, but it would have been less likely then. Well, if you don't tell them to stop, I'm not going to do anything about it. I saw a senior manager tell an employee that. Are you kidding me? What do you think their harassing behavior is going to do? going to continue and it may escalate because now you are putting the burden on the victim to put a stop to it. Is that fair? Absolutely not. Okay. The bottom there, report to supervisor or HR. Okay. If you've witnessed harassment, now she's really eagle eye on me now. Okay. Address your concerns. Help them to understand it could be harassment. Let's say in the row right behind you, you are harassing him and she witnesses it. Can you go to him and say, when she speaks to you like that, it's totally inappropriate, it's harassing behavior, we need to put a stop to it. Can you do that? Good. Yeah. Would you care? Coming from you, of course he would care. Okay, so can you tell someone what they're doing is not okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay? And they may say, he may say, you know what? She's been doing that to me for 20 years in the workplace. And I've just never had the courage to stand up and tell her to stop. Right? Okay, so now what do you do? Report it to a supervisor of human resources. Okay? Because I bet your county policy says that if harassing or inappropriate workplace behavior is reported to a supervisor, you must take action. Right? Does it say that? There's only two or three people in here nodding their heads. Yes. As a supervisor, you have the responsibility to stop inappropriate behavior in the workplace once you've been notified. Okay? That answer your question? You sure? Okay. Have you harassed someone? Nobody's putting their hands up. I'm sure I did. Okay? Apologize to the person you may have offended in a timely manner. Be careful not to repeat the behavior. Okay. Let's pretend I told a dirty joke and I offended you. Okay? What's your first name? Jerry. Jerry. I told a dirty joke. I'm really sorry. Didn't mean to offend you. Is that good enough? Two days later, Jerry, I told another dirty joke. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Two days later, look, Jerry, I've got a problem with telling dirty jokes. I don't mean to offend, but they're my best material. I apologize. Is that good? No. Okay. When should I stop telling dirty jokes? 
the second you find out, or just don't tell them in the first place, right? Okay, zero tolerance. Now, I don't see I pointed at that screen, you can't see it. Zero tolerance, the first time I offend her, she should be speaking up to me or telling a supervisor to tell me, stop it. And if I continue, what should I expect? A little memorandum that says, to Kurt from boss, subject, written reprimand, blah, 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 violation of yada, 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 ching, right? Oh, man, maybe I should stop telling dirty jokes at work. You know, ding. Okay. Use your filters. The, <clears throat> i got to stop pointing at that thing. Use your filters. What are filters? The little voice in your head that tells you what you say and what you should not say, right? What, filters? The little voices in your head? No, but your health insurance would. Not your county insurance pool insurance, okay? Hey, it's when the voices in your head start arguing. That's when you start to think, maybe I shouldn't say that, okay? What would grandma say? Is that a filter? Yes? Okay, you know better than that. Attitude adjustment. How many people have been knocked around by their grandparents? Did you listen? Yes, afterwards. Okay. Is this a filter? If it's so big you can drive a car through it. No? Probably doesn't filter much, right? How about this? Better? A little. How about this? Better. If we all came to work with our filters operating at 100% all the time, could we reduce harassment claims? Yes. There are some jokes that could make it through the filter. I said this in yesterday's class. One of my funniest things that I have cut out of the newspaper and brought to work are Dilbert cartoons. Pretty harmless, mostly about work, funny ha ha. Don't go writing your manager's name on it or doing anything like that. That's a little too specific, okay? But sometimes cartoons in the newspaper are really funny, right? You get a little out of control or something like that, then you probably need to rein it in, okay? There are jokes you can tell at work. Okay, and there are the rest of them, okay, that you can't. Okay, what is this a picture of? The Grand Canyon, okay. Now, if this photograph was taken from up somewhere in the atmosphere, you would say that that is a large hole in the ground, if you can see it from space, right? Okay, so if you and your team are operating out here on the plateau on the left, in the safe zone, is that a good place to be? Okay, let's pretend the canyon is hostile work environment, sexual harassment, dirty jokes, all those behaviors that no, we know get us in trouble. Do you want your team working out here on the plateau or right on that edge? Out on the plateau where it's safe, right? Now, if one of your team members, supervisor, peer, doesn't matter who it is, starts to stray from the group and they start to trickle out here toward the edge, what is our responsibility? Push is the wrong answer, okay? Reel them in, bring them back from the edge, all right? We already talked about productivity, morale, turnover, credibility in the community. If we shove that guy over the edge, let's just set him up, he'll fail completely. When that hits the newspaper, how is that good for us? It's not, right? So. Would you rather be out here in the plateau or operating on the edge? You want to be out safe. Now, we talked about if an employee one time can do something so egregious that they get terminated. Is that possible? If you were operating way out here on the left in the plateau and somebody gets away from the group and runs and jumps off that edge, could you have prevented that? Maybe not. Is that okay? It sucks, but that person doesn't work here anymore, okay? So, if we know everything we know about this, why do people keep falling in that hole every single year? They don't care. What did we talk about when we started? Why are we here? We need a reminder. Laws have changed, we need to get updated, we need to be aware of this, right? And sometimes people forget, and they take a leap, and we can't save them. Fair statement? Okay. Stay out here on the plateau 
Our responsibility is to keep people away from that edge. All right, how to set boundaries. Communicate expectations for interaction. Set an example with your own behavior. Communicate discomfort early on. Can we all do that? Yes. Seek assistance. Contact a supervisor or HR. We're all aware of that, right? What to say. Identify the behavior. Tell the person how that behavior makes you feel and why. Ask for the behavior to stop. So let's say she's telling, I'm telling dirty jokes. I've apologized three or four times. When she tells me, she may finally just get fed up and say, Kurt, when you do that, it makes me feel really low or whatever in work. Please stop. Is that pretty clear? Eye contact, hand up, everybody knows that, what that means. I do it again. Kurt, when you do that, it makes me feel horrible at work. Please stop. Clear? And if I don't stop, what is she going to do? Go to a supervisor. And she's probably going to go to a supervisor with all her notes. On this date, he told this joke. And on this date, he told this joke, and I told him to stop. And on this date, he told this joke, and I told him to stop. He knows it makes me feel uncomfortable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What's the next thing I'm going to get? To Kurt from boss. Subject, time off without pay. OK? All right, preventing harassment. Can we be careful with our humor? Can we think before we speak? Can we follow a hands-off policy at work? Outside which we've agreed, maybe a handshake, a fist tap, a nudge on the shoulder is OK. Outside of that, we don't need to touch anybody, right? OK. Can you be held personally responsible? Yes, you can be sued as an individual. Is everybody aware of that? OK. Harassment is about deciding to treat people respectfully or not. Current events. This is, what, two weeks ago now? Sued by EEOC for pregnancy discrimination. This is in Atlanta. Violated federal law by firing a newly hired licensed skin care therapist shortly after learning that she was pregnant. The agency alleges that she had deceived the company by not disclosing her pregnancy during the interview. What? Exactly. Do you have to? Absolutely not. Okay. Violates Title VII of the Civil Rights Act as amended by the Pregnancy Discrimination Act. Next. Last week, EEOC sues for age and sex discrimination after hiring a principal supervisor learned an employee had retired from a prior job. Owners began questioning his fitness for the job and making comments related to his age, and at least one of its owners made gender discriminatory comments, implying that females were more desirable as employees because they were more passive. What do you think? They haven't met you? OK. So, and what's that violation of the Age Discrimination and Employment Act and Title VII of the Civil Rights Act? Okay, is that a problem? Huge problem, right? Also last week, company to pay $50,000 in disability discrimination lawsuit in Minneapolis. A company violated the ADA when it refused to allow an employee to return to work after he had a heart attack and instead fired him. The employee was released by his doctor to return to work with no restrictions, but when he contacted the company to let them know he was available, the employer did not allow him to return to work. The trial attorney in EEOC's Minneapolis area office who litigated the case added, an employer cannot refuse to allow an employee to return to work because he has had a heart attack and is perceived as disabled. Make sense? Okay, so that's, you get on Department of Labor, and I think it's under news releases or whatever, and you can read dozens of these. They update every week or two. They're everywhere. People just doing crazy things in the workplace. Okay? So, can we avoid harassment in the workplace by respecting the work environment? Yes. Respecting all coworkers. Thinking before you speak. Yes. Does anybody have any questions? You sure? If so, call HR. Okay? All right. If there's nothing else, thanks for being here. Travel safe wherever you need to go. If you have any questions, feel free to come down and let me know or pick up a business card and contact me later. Thank you.